Hello, welcome to Literary Life and welcome to this video where I'm going to give you a quick update on the weekend's reading success or lack thereof. Um, I'm still going to call it a success, actually. There, the good reading happened. And uh, I'm going to tell you a review on a, four books um, that I have finished and then where I'm at with my reading for the early part of the week and a little bit about what's to come this week um, uh, with some videos. So <laughs> quick recap. Uh, this was the Dewey's 24-hour readathon, and I had... Um, I had plans. I had I had some plans that involved reading, um, and I did get some reading done. I did manage to finish *The Beasting*, which is a massive book, and I'll be talking to you about that shortly with the book reviews. But I did not really read anything else until starting today. So. Yeah, there wasn't as much reading, but I did some gardening. I got outside. We had drinks with neighbors. Um, so there, there were good things. There were good things. I did, I did some baking and um, I, I cooked. I made a Latin American uh, carne guisada, a, a beef stew, and uh, a skillet chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> And so things happened. Um, so where I'm at with my reading, I am going to have a video out tomorrow because Wednesday, the Republic of Consciousness for the UK and uh, Ireland is announcing the winner from the shortlist. I still have one book left on the shortlist to read, and that is the end of August, which is a beast. It's 700 pages. So this is going to be a big focus. And... <laughs> Because what I wanted to do tomorrow was put up a video for you all with my thoughts on the shortlist books in which one out of the five I think there are, I was hoping would be the winner. But that means I have to read them. So anyway, we're, we're going we're gonna to really tackle that. And then the other thing I was working on today, because I need to return it to the library, is How to Say Babylon, um, which has won a number of awards and has been a much talked about book. This is a memoir. Um, so I will have a review a video up on that as well once I finish it. But yeah, that bad boy needs to go back. I can't renew it. So that is what I'm going to be reading today and tomorrow, those two books, um, and then getting that video up tomorrow, which means Wednesday, I will do a video with you all sharing um, for sure who won the prize. And um, yeah, and then we'll just keep reading to get some more reviews done. Now, if you're new to my channel, first of all, welcome. <laughs> um, my book reviews are spoiler free. So as I move into... Uh, going through these four books, I will make sure I don't spoil them in case you do choose to pick them up. Um, I give every book one to five stars. One star, I did not like the book. Often, I don't even finish reading it anymore. Um, two stars, eh, it was an okay book. Um, three stars, it's a good book. I liked it, and I'm going to recommend it to certain people. Four stars, great book. I loved it. And then five stars are those more random books that just blow my mind and I just want everyone to read them and we all talk about them. Um, so let's get started and as always below share with me if you've read these books if you plan to your thoughts or just whatever. I love you guys your comments always make my day <laughs> so I get really excited. All right we're gonna go lowest to highest and this is a book this first one <laughs> That that is on the shortlist for the Republic of Consciousness Prize. And um, this was a book that's translated from Spanish. It's set in Brazil. And I was so intrigued. And I just, it just isn't for me. Um, the book is Out of Earth by Shayla Smaniota. And I hope I did not completely butcher that. So this book had a really interesting concept. Um, it's following four generations of females in this, uh, it sounds like a very rural area, felt like a very rural area of Brazil. Um, the women are navigating hardships. Uh, this is a, uh, a, yeah, we've got women, the, you know, the older age women that were with at their older years, and then some of the younger generations were with in their younger years. So you're getting like different points of life. Um, it's going to talk about the inequality. It's going to talk about the impact of colonialism. And I thought it was really interesting because I I don't I think it was in the beginning of this book. 
I don't know if it was notes from the translator where I found this, but I learned a couple of things about Brazil. Brazil was one of the last countries, or no, it is the last country in the world that abolished transatlantic slavery. I did not know that. Um, they have had a couple of military dictatorships in the 20th century. And what's really interesting per the, um, the author or the translator, the introduction, it was in the introduction, that's why I read about all this. Supposedly, according to the person that wrote the introduction, Brazil has a culture, a mindset of not fully acknowledging, confronting um, the, some of the negatives about it. And um, the way it says it described it was it, Brazil does not confront its history. It sweeps it, sweeps the bad under the rug. And I thought that was really interesting. I mean, I think humanity and, you know, we that does tend to happen quite often. Right. But I thought it was something that sounded like it's so entrenched in the history um, and this author in, is really kind of countering that. And so I was so excited. I loved the introduction of this book. And um, as soon as we got into the writing style, I struggled. I could not follow what was happening. Um, the characters, it's a very fragmented narration, I will just show you visually, and normally this doesn't bother me. I love like experimental forms and writing styles, but you'd have like a really short thing and then you would move into, you know, maybe a page and a half and then you're back. It's very, I mean, normally I would look at something like this and think, I got this. I can, I mean, these are snippets, moments. I couldn't figure out who was who, what the heck was happening, what time we were at. I was just getting lost. And I like the writing, the way people use words. Um, I When it's done in a way that feels almost melodic or poetic, I do enjoy that. But there was something about the way the set, these sentences were structured. I just could not follow. It did not work for my brain. And I did find myself wondering, you know, I was coming out of a multi-day, you know, migraine. There was a, a, a bit of a fog. I'm like, is it the migraine fog or is it me? But I kept trying and I'm like, you know what? I I just, there's, I, I'm just, I'm getting really firm with myself about DNFing. Um, but this is one that I'm, because, you know, I know it was selected for the shortlist um, and conceptually so intrigued. So if you have read this book, I would love to hear uh yeah, what you thought as you were reading it, if you have pointers, if you were able to follow it, if there's something I should, a framework I should use or something I should keep in mind. Um, but this book, once I get through the video tomorrow, um, I will be listing this at some point, even if I give it a quick go again this later this week, if I hear back from you all and decide to dive in again, I will um, list it on my Pango shop. For So for those of you that may be familiar with this author or have heard feel differently about the book and want to read it. Just FYI, it, it will it will get there. Um, now, I did not have a two-star book out of these four, but I did have a three-star book. I thought this was a good book. And this one I was so intrigued by because it has a situation with the author where the author is currently incarcerated in Belarus. He is an international lawyer and he was part of the Belarusian resistance movement. I think he was incarcerated around 2020. Um, what's really fascinating, and I actually would love, this is a situation where I would love to know more of <laughs> more of the story, which he obviously couldn't share now, but somehow he was able to, to move all these short stories out of prison where he's currently at, and his wife and sister have taken those and... Um, Got, put them into publication. And there was pause about doing so. And because this could endanger this man's life. And uh, but anyway, they, they've moved forward. So we have 100 short stories here that are capturing very simple moments. And I, when I say simple, I just mean like a food exchange or just the day to day events. Um, but it really hones in on the dynamics between the prisoners or between the prisoner and the guard 
And um, the writing style, everything is is very straightforward, very simple. I mean, for me, it's like the polar opposite of this. Um, and I found myself wondering, I mean, every, every story is only a few pages. And you can see here the font's not very large. And I, I wondered how much of this structure in the writing style, the simplicity of it, was driven by the fact that he was in prison and he had to, you know, these things, I don't know if they were snuck out story by story or how he moved them. Um, and that's something I would be so curious about. I haven't read, I don't know um, any other work by him if he wrote before, and I would be curious about his writing style. So that is something I'm very intrigued by. But the stories themselves, uh, I found there were some that I absolutely loved and some that I'm like, okay, they these... It was good. It was good. Um, some of them really capture the sense of confusion, the fact that rules and expectations can just be shifted at whim due to the mood of the guard or due to the particular guard. Um, and the the sense of, I don't know, like f not frailty, but fru uh, oh, I see this is the migraine. I can never get the words sometimes that I'm looking for, but it, like not being able to understand what do I need to do to predict um, just to be fated to fail, essentially, that the prisoners experienced, I thought was a really interesting dynamic. And then there were other just very simple moments between the prisoners and the way the culture that they foster, the rules that they put into place because they all have to share the space um, around cleanliness. I remember one was like picking up your hair. Uh, and it's just, it was such an, such an entertaining read um, in that regard as well. So when I think about like who I would recommend this book to, um, if I, first of all, if you enjoy, uh, this one may be obvious, but if you do enjoy reading stories, whether it's nonfiction or fiction about a prison system, there are several books that I have read that I think are intriguing. And I've got a couple back there about the American prison system in particular that I still have to read. But when I think about those kinds of books, I think that the cultural variety in this one, you know, coming from the Belarusian prison system perspective, um, definitely I would recommend. Um, but I also think that there is something here for people, especially if you like short stories, because these are such brief, brief snippets. I would say for anybody that really enjoys the cultural diversity, if you're really looking at international um, literature, you know, incorporating more of it, um, obviously this is going to be very restricted to a very specific character set and a very specific geography. But there is something so fascinating to me about the way that, like I said, the prisoners related to each other and the dynamics. And the author does a good job, I think, uh, for someone being not of Belarus, of explaining some of the nuances or the translator did. So you have you, you're learning as you read. So that's who I would recommend this book for. And like I said, this is like the perfect like short story. Like you could totally just kind of weave this in because um, these are so brief, um, just a few pages. And uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a really easy read in that regard. The part that weighs on at least me as I was reading it is the reality of the author's situation, you know, who produced produced these stories. Um, so really it's a good, good book. OK, then we're going to move into a four star. And this is another one that's on the short list for the Republic of Consciousness Prize. Um, the press for this one is Cassava Republic. This is a debut novel called Avenues by Train by Fari Mudzwinga. And I'm sure I butchered that and I apologize. Um, this book is set in South Africa and um, it's... It, Within South Africa is the country. There's a rural place. I don't think it exists in reality because I try to Google it. Just I, Sometimes I like to look at the towns to get like a feel visually, some of the images. So I, I you know, I, I just have more context and nothing came up um, but for the town itself. But Har Harari or Harari. Um, is the more the bigger city. So we have a, a young boy who's in this more rural area that I believe is fictitious, but um, outside of a more 
about a more a larger city, Harare or Harare. And um, <laughs> you guys, if you can't tell, this author's tone, the voice of this author, that I don't know if it's the author's or what he brought through for the character, but hilarious. So this book is going to delve into some heavy subjects, but there is so much humor and so much sarcasm just woven throughout this book that I was smiling and laughing at so many points. So the book is about a young boy who, as a child, experienced a tragedy. Um, a friend of his is killed by a train, and this is in the description, so not a spoiler. And he is, we're essentially going to get to know him at points in his childhood leading up to that moment briefly, more so after that moment. And then he is going to move into the, the city, leave his, his more rural village, move into the city. And we're going to see how he's continuing to grapple with uh, a number of things that he's experienced throughout his life, but that trauma in particular. And as well as, well, within the context of his culture and his spiritual beliefs. And I think I've seen this referred to in one place as experimental literature. And I think it it may be um, due to the, the writing uh, framework that he applies. Because you'll have very typical narration occurring where, you know, the characters being described. It's very linear, linear linear what's happening and then all of a sudden it'll be like a dialogue and it'll be um like people's like as a community their voices speaking you know about their experience or speaking to the heavens so to speak and so you have these shifts in a completely different writing style and for me I found it actually very engaging um, and it gave me a good feel, I thought, for the, the culture and the, the nature of the spirituality that our main character was, um, that was a part of him in his life. He, we're going to get to meet his family as well a little bit. We're going to get his, um, a little bit of exposure to his parents um, through his eyes his older sister um, is going to have also moved to the city, and we are going to get um, a bit of her point of view. And then we're also going to get the point of view. So we actually have three, if I recall. Um, I don't think I'm forgetting one. We have our narrator, who's the boy, the brother. We have his older sister's point of view at one time. But I would say 90% of the time we're following the boy um, or the man. And um, when he, you know, some of it's about his adult life. And then um, there is a young prostitute named Penny. And we're going to get her point of view. And so that's the other thing I want to pull out is that this book is really capturing much more than this, our main character's life and his experience. It's really giving us insight into, um, you know, poverty and some of the struggles that the people within this community are facing. I loved this book. This was a four star, four and a half star read for me. I um, am definitely going to read this one again because I I don't know that I've read, I've read, definitely have read books in Africa, but I feel like more northern from countries that are more north or central Africa. So um, that piece of it. And then I just absolutely loved this author's writing. And he is one that is now on my radar. This was his debut. And I am hopeful that he will continue writing and I will look forward to what else he brings forth. All right. Then we have The Beast, <laughs> this book. I have been reading this book, it feels like forever, as, as I kept leaving in other books. So The Beasting by Paul Murray, guys. <sighs> what to say about this book? My gosh. Okay, so this this book is set, um, I believe it's Ireland. I'm totally, this family is just so, okay, so we have, we have four people in this family. We have the father, Dickie. We have his wife, Imelda. We have the two children. The older daughter is Cass, and then the younger son is PJ. And they are, um, I would say first we're going to, this is one where the book is going to shift, first of all, between perspectives. And we're going to get a whole section. I'd say the first half of the book 
we're going to stay with each of the four characters one time for a very long period of time, and we're going to get their perspective. And essentially what is happening is, you know, Dickie comes, the dad, comes from a very affluent family, um, and that family had started a uh, car dealership in a repair business in their town that had historically been very successful and is going through rough times. And then we're going to meet his wife, Imelda, in her section. And it's interesting because we see her through the eyes of her children and through her husband. And then you get into, and this, of course, happens for all four of them, where we see them through each other's eyes. And then we get to get into their own heads. And it's just brilliant. And Imelda is comes from a very different background, a very poor background, a lot of um, abuse, very different dynamic. Her her dad and her brothers. Um, it's interesting the masculinity, the masculine roles, and how they can vary based on socioeconomic status, but also where the similarities lie. And then the same thing about the female roles, which aren't as heavily explored um, in my mind, but it, they're still there. And we see some of the dynamics and again, the differences between um, how women are treated, how women are um, valued, or what are the values, you know, in the female is a little bit. But I, I feel like the masculine, there was a lot more masculinity in the book. And I enjoyed it. Either way, I, I would have enjoyed it. But um, the characters are so well developed that even among the men, if I think about each of the all the different male characters, there's so much variety and uniqueness. And I absolutely loved it. And we also are going to get to know, um, so that was Imelda's background, then her, the older daughter, Cass, is approaching the end of her schooling um, is a is like a high school and she's getting ready for her big exams. But she has um, really she's going through her own um, social concerns and struggles and begins drinking heavily as described. Um, and the, so, again, no spoiler there, but we're going to see basically what's going on in her mind and what's driving that behavior and then the younger brother, PJ, what he's going through, um, the struggles he's facing. But for uh, for both Cass and PJ, we're going to see how they're experiencing and seeing their parents' difficulties as well. I mean, it is just such a fascinating way of looking at the dynamics and how uh, the same experience can have different experiences, <laughs> the same event Everyone is experiencing it in such a unique way due to their role in the family or due to their age or due to their personality and who they are is just brilliant. What I loved was then as we move after that first round of going through this family and getting introduced to them, it's written in the third person. So it's about each of the family members, right? Like Cass, you know, we talk about Cass and she when we come back around, it shifts into the second person. And I thought that was so interesting that the author did that because now I'm in Cass's head. I'm in Dickie's head. And it's like, you wonder this. It becomes so personal and you're in their internal monologue. And I think that that was such a subtle but brilliant thing. I almost missed that the author had done that. And so then we go back through and we're also going to be getting the backstory to the parents as we're going through their perspectives. But now we really know them when we come back around and we're getting even more intimate. And then we're going to get to the point of the ending. And all I'm going to say is that one of you had commented, I think you were, a book club of yours was going to be discussing this book, and you said how there are multiple interpretations of the ending. And I was like, ooh, okay, that's interesting. Um, and yeah, the ending, for those of you that don't like unspecified endings, <laughs> be forewarned. Do I think this book is brilliant and absolutely worth it? Yes, I think you should still pick it up. 
but this is definitely one where you are left with a knot of tension that just doesn't get released. Like you're just sitting there like, oh my God, did that just happen? In fact, that's exactly what happened yesterday was I could hear my husband, I'm at the end of the book and I couldn't put it down. I could hear my husband, Chris, out there in the backyard talking to the neighbors and I wanted to go say something and I'm like, I can't finish this book. I, I mean, I can't put this book down. I have to finish it. Then I finished the book. And I did, I walked out there and I said to my neighbors, oh my God, I, I just, I just finished this. I mean, they're not talking about books, but I am. I'm like, I just finished this book and oh my God. Like, it's one of those things where you, you don't, people around you may not even read, but you're like, I must tell you this book just did something like I'm in, I'm in shock. I'm just kind of walking around like, did what's happening? Did this happen? Is this going to happen? I don't know. And that was it. And I sat there and I didn't even know how I was going to rate it when I first first finished the book. And then I'm like, well, there you go. That's a five star read. <laughs> so The Beasting by Paul Murray. Not a surprise. This book has been awarded, talked about, all the things. But wow, there is so much here. So from a thematic lens, you guys, everything I feel like is going to be explored here. But we are going to see the experience of parenting. We're going to see the experience of family obligations. We're going to see the marital difficulties. Um, we're going to see the conflict between being true to oneself and meeting the expectations of others. And I thought there's just so much in here. This is another book. I absolutely love, I need to put a list together of these like family, just, oh, just these brilliantly written books like this. And I, I will read this one again. Um, the pacing in this book I thought was brilliant. I feel like it started out very casually slow, but very intriguing and engaging. And then it just... It was like the opposite of a roller coaster. I don't actually ride, ride roller coasters. So this I may not pull this metaphor off, but I feel like from the few times I have <laughs> rode, you know, they start off with the big hills kind of fairly quickly. Maybe I'm wrong in that, but I feel like this one's the opposite where you're you're just kind of coasting and then you get like a little bit and it's a good ride. You're you're engaged, but then you just just go shoom and then the it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's the tension built up, right? Right. It just the pace picked up by the end. So you went it and that I think that pacing switch, um, as you just you were like I said, not bored. It wasn't too slow. It was engaging, but it just as the book continued, the pacing's picking up and the attention's picking up, and it's just flipping by the end. You are just moving, moving, you're back between the characters, and then boom. It's done and you're just you're just left sitting there like, what did that book just do to me? I'm not sure. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant um, crafting and reading experience <clears throat> there with the beasting. So that is it. So um, yeah, that <laughs> that was my that was my weekend and last few uh, few days and you see what's coming ahead. So as always, guys, uh, tell me below, like I said, if you've read these books, if you plan to, and what you plan on reading, what are you going to be tackling this week? Um, and I will be seeing you again tomorrow because we all know I this is what I'm doing for a while. So <laughs> other than that, which is actually a really exciting thing. Um, but anyway, uh, let's 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 go read some books. So happy reading. Thank you all for being a part of my literary life now. Let's go read some books. Happy reading. <laughs>